And welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee. Our first guest is here. Dun, 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 dun. First time here? Yes. It's okay. It's a beautiful thing. Give her a big round of applause, and you are very much welcome. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, Melissa Ladano of Montefiore Medical Center. She joins us for a look at the overactive bladders and the health impacts. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in this first, and what you're about. So I am an a, assistant professor of urology at uh, Montefiore Medical Center, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Um, I trained as a urologist and have also done a fellowship in um, pelvic floor medicine. So um, we treat many, both men and women, mm -hmm. with overactive bladder syndrome. This is something that... Um, uh, 30 million people living in the United States suffer from. Yes. So it's a big health problem. Many people don't necessarily seek out the attention of their doctor for this problem, so it can go undiagnosed for some time. So we really want to get the word out that there are treatments that are available yeah. and that we're here at Montefiore to, to treat the patients now, for this. Pelvic floor medicine, you mm -hmm. mentioned that. What's it all about? So we um, take a multidisciplinary approach to this. Uh, it uh, involves urologists, gynecologists for our female patients, although mm -hmm. um, we are definitely focusing on the men today because of Men's Health Month. Sure. Um, we have um, uh, physical therapists who are involved in training um, the pelvic floor muscles. We also work closely with the internists because um, these problems can definitely be connected to other uh, health problems in our lives, such as diabetes, obesity, oh, yeah. things that do affect many of our patients that yeah, we Yeah, I was going to ask you if there are other underlying issues that contribute to... Uh, exactly. This. We often see diabetic patients who have a spectrum of bladder symptoms that can present with things like urgency, frequency, feeling like they need to run to the bathroom all yeah. of the time. I've had patients who know where every bathroom is on their path to work because yeah. they have to stop off on the way. Wow. And so it can be a big impact on their quality yeah. of life. And, and, and how does that, I mean, how does it develop? Is it, you're not born with it? Or? No, um, uh, although there are, we do sometimes treat um, young pediatric patients with some of these conditions. Typically, we see that these symptoms increase um, over uh, the course of our lives, and older patients do have higher rates of overactive bladder sure. syndrome. Um, but it can also be connected to some of uh, the behavioral things that we do in our life. So um, things that patients may not think about are um, caffeine intake can really, has oh, been yeah. shown as one of the risk factors to increase bothersome urinary symptoms. Um, and there's been a very good study that looked at even um, just two cups of coffee a day caused men to have um, severe, moderate to severe urinary incontinence, meaning that they actually were leaking urine. So yeah. pretty severe symptoms. Wow. I know. Oh, yeah, You're looking yeah. down at that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I just took a sip. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. And so um, that is always where we start with the treatment of our patients. We sure. start by um, helping them to identify things in their life that they can do to make a difference in their urinary complaints. Um, so things like... So you have like, to watch what you eat. You do. Not only know where the bathrooms are, but you have to watch what you eat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and some of the other things is that... Uh, I don't. I don't know. I think. No, a absolutely. A lot of people. A lot of people have this problem, but they're reluctant to go see someone about it because yes. of the it, stigma. Is there stigma attached to this? I think it. You know, it's not always the most comfortable subject to bring up uh, regarding um, complaints about urinary problems, and so I'll often see patients that have had these symptoms for years. And perhaps they've never told anyone in their family or they've never told no. their internal medicine doctor. And so they've not been um, enrolled in any sort of treatment. Yeah. Do you see that men may be reluctant to more yes, so than women? Uh, I, you know, I don't know if I can quote you a number, but I definitely have seen that sometimes for male patients in particular, um, it's difficult for them to uh, get into the doctor and to... Um, 
bring up some of these uh, quality of life yeah. symptoms that have been bothering but them. But some of the symptoms you can't laugh out loud or if you, if you laugh you're worried about if you're going to yes, overreact. That, so that is one area of urinary incontinence that we deal with is uh, leaking urine when you cough or sneeze or run. The other kind of incontinence that some people don't even think about but um, this idea of you have the urge to go to the bathroom and before you can even get there or you know patients will describe I'm yeah. putting the key in the door and then as soon as I get there I'm leaking oh. urine. So these problems are we actually treat um, two in two separate um, with two separate and that can be algorithms. A normal urge too for, for yes, a normal it, person. It you know, can be. It can be. Waiting for an elevator and you're like oh right. can't wait till I get there. So that's why we really do start intervening when people describe that these things are negatively impacting their quality of life. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the symptoms? What are some of the tips? What can people do? What right. So the the symptoms are things like um, urgency, so that's running to the bathroom, frequency, going to the ba bathroom frequently, nocturia, which is when you get up more than two times a night to go to the bathroom. Um, and not feeling like you're emptying, completely emptying your bladder, maybe? Yes, this is another symptom that many patients describe this feeling like they mm. can't get all the urine to come out. So those are some of the red flags that you should bring these mm -hmm. conditions up to or these symptoms up to your doctor. And it may be something that your primary doctor starts out treating. Um, and if the symptoms are persistent or worsening or not improving with treatment, then they will refer to you to a specialist. And that is where we yeah. come in. And is there also a nutritionist that you go to? Yes. Are there some foods we, that you can eat or drink? Yes, or? we are very fortunate at Montefiore to work to have a nutritionist that we work closely with. And, mm -hmm. at, you know, we mentioned coffee, but other foods can also be, can impact these, um, uh, the urinary frequency. Sure. Um, and also, we work closely with the nutritionists for conditions such as diabetes, which have a big component of um, urinary frequency urgency. Yes, so yes, if yes. we can really get patients treated for their diabetes, oftentimes their urinary symptoms will improve. There you go. So mm -hmm. you're doing it all at Montefiore. Yes, yes, we are. We're very fortunate. And we're very fortunate to have um, several research studies as well going on at Montefiore, both in basic science research mm -hmm and in clinical trials. So um, there is a, a lot going on right here in the Bronx that we can offer to our patients. Anything that we should know before you leave? Um, I just think, yes, that if you are experiencing these symptoms, please um, uh, seek early medical attention and your primary doctor can refer you to a specialist mm -hmm. if your symptoms are persistent. And you know we're here to help. You definitely don't have to live this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys are doing a great job over at the Montefiore. Yes, we you are. Shout out your department and some of the people that work with you. Yes, that would be great. I have an amazing chairman, Dr. Mark Schoenberg, um, and, and also a partner specifically uh, who works in the same area. Her name is Dr. Nithya Abraham. Uh -huh. um, and we've got a great department uh, of urologists for all, you know, today we were focusing on urinary incontinence, but whether it's oncology, cancer, um, uh, kidney stone disease, our urology department has pretty much anything that you would need. So uh, we're very fortunate to work yeah. together. Can we see it up on the website? Or yes. We have uh, a website. Um, I think we also have our phone number, our direct line for patients to call for our uh, for appointments, so yeah. that they can have uh, access to getting What's in the quickly. Website? Um, it's uh, Montefiore, www.montefiore.org, nah. um, and I think you guys have the phone number we'll to flash number. Yeah, flash we'll, out for us. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the website, one more time, because oh, people can remember that yeah. and get everything else from there. www.montefiore.org. Yeah. Um, and um, yes, so you go to the website and you can navigate to the, urology, the Department of Urology if this is specifically the issue that you well, need. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your service. And we oh, appreciate well, thank your you awareness for here me. on BronxNet. Yes. Thank you. Give a big round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Dr. Melissa. A. Ladano, MD, attending physician, Montefiore Medical. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank All you right. so much. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with a whole lot more next on Open.